We're following the breaking news tonight. The U.S. launching more airstrikes against Islamic militants in Iraq today. 40,000 people are trapped on a mountaintop, ordered by ISIS to convert to Islam or face execution. So who is this extremist group known as the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, or ISIS? To give you an idea of how radical they are, al-Qaeda recently cut ties with them. Their goal is to form a single Islamic state based on Sharia law. They target Shiite Muslims, Christians, and other ethnic minorities with gruesome tactics like beheadings, executions, and public crucifixions. They're a group known for, pa for mass killings. Recently, a reporter from Vice News was embedded with the group for three weeks. NBC News has no affiliation with Vice News, and we have not verified the interviews or video in this documentary, but the message of the militants in the video is alarming. <laughs> Joining me now is NBC terrorism analyst Evan Coleman. Thank you, first of all, for being here tonight. Thank you very much. Is this the most violent terror organization in the world today? It's extreme beyond extreme. And I think that's what's so interesting is that even Al-Qaeda has rejected this group because it is so hard line. They recently changed their name from ISIS to simply the Islamic State. And anyone in the Mosul area who continues to call them ISIS, their old name is subject to punishment, a, a lashing of 70 lashings. This group, it, it's beyond comprehension, some of the, the ideas and some of the logic that they have. And the hope is, is that they're so radical, they turn off even their own Sunni Muslim allies, and that we can kind of engineer what we did with the surge back in 2007, yeah. 2008, again here. Well, how, how did they manage to take control of such a large area of Iraq? Well, I think that's the sad part. Is, is that and when, do it so fast. Yeah, when, when the U.S. left Iraq, we had done a pretty good job in, in corralling these folks. This was al-Qaeda in Iraq. This was initially al-Qaeda in Iraq. We had done a lot of damage to them. We had killed their leadership. We had, we'd basically pushed them into a corner of Iraq. Unfortunately, what happened is, is Syria. In the interim, two things really would happen. First of all, the conflict in Syria, and second of all, the political deadlock in Iraq. With the instability on the Syrian-Iraqi border, with the deadlock led by Maliki in Iraq, where you see, you know, unfortunately, you see a Shiite-led government imposing basically sanctions on the Sunni community, you had these two elements to come together. And what you had is Sunnis in northern Iraq start to say, look, these ISIS guys, they seem pretty crazy, but we still prefer them to the Maliki government in Baghdad. And that's really how this, all this happened. Today, Senate Intelligence Committee Chairman Dianne Feinstein said ISIS is, quote, not a typical terrorist organization. It is a terrorist army operating with military expertise, advancing across Iraq and rapidly consolidating its position. How have these militants been trained, even? Well, they've been trained by the fire. I mean, they've been fighting against the regime of Bashar al-Assad in Syria now for years. And because of that frontline experience and because of all the American weaponry that they seized from the Iraqi government, these guys are quite an effective fighting force. They have a lot of experience. They have a lot of firepower. And what's more disturbing is, is that they're successfully recruiting Americans to travel from the United States over to Iraq and Syria to join them. Just within Americans. The, just within the past Last week, an American, a young guy from a 20-year-old from Los Angeles, was stopped by the FBI at Los Angeles Airport, uh, and he admitted freely he was on his way to join ISIS. Now, look, there's not a lot of these guys, but it only takes a few of them to cause real problems because if these folks get that level of training and they learn how to build bombs and they come back here, we have to. Hope. He was an American in Los Angeles. Yeah, an American. And he's not the first. He's okay. not the first. There's. That's the problem is, is that there are people traveling from all sorts of places in the U.S. right now trying to join this group. Tampa, Los Angeles, 
the interior of the country, the coastline, it, it, in places you would never imagine and people you would never imagine, people, some of whom don't even speak a word of Arabic. Now, you know, as we mentioned, Vice News was embedded with ISIS. Again, NBC has no affiliation with Vice, and we have not verified this video. But listen to this militant describe what they're doing in Iraq. What's your reaction, Evan? You, you should understand that part of the group that's fighting there, they're foreign fighters. They're not Iraqis, they're not Syrians. For them, this is like a safari. It's like a jihad safari. They go from conflict to conflict in Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, Somalia, wherever they can find fighting. And for them, that's glory. That, that's fun. That's the kind of people we're dealing with. That's why it's so dangerous. And that's why these people are not just a threat to Iraqi security or to Syrian security or to Saudi security. They're a threat to us because they view us as the enemy. They are a threat to us, you feel? They're training people right now to come and try to carry out acts of violence in various different European countries as well as the United States. That's not a question, it's a fact. The Norwegians were just on a state of high alert because they believed that an attack was imminent in Norway. Norway. Wow. Due to militants trained in Iraq by ISIS. Their tactics, crucifixions, beheadings, I mean, is part of their uh, strategy Fear? Is yeah. that how they're gaining a lot of ground there so quickly? They believe they can terrorize their enemies into submission. They believe that they can frighten their enemies to either leave Iraq or, fa or be wiped out. And, you know, unfortunately, if you look what's happened, the people that, that pr presented the greatest threat to them in Iraq, to them taking over Iraq, the Kurds and the Shiites, it's been now a month and a half, and they haven't done a lot to try to stem the tide of ISIS. In fact, what we've seen is, is that the ISIS wave continues. That's what's disturbing, and that's what leads us to believe that at this point, if the U.S. doesn't take some form of action here, this is not going to improve. It's going to get worse, and it's going to get worse steadily, and, you know, thousands of people are going to lose their lives. That's the problem. Fascinating. Uh, Evan Coleman, thank you for your time tonight. Thank you very much.